Did you hear my cat? <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> we are now live, everyone. <laughs> yes, hey. we are. Welcome. It's another wonderful week with CLCI for our Happy today. Tuesday. Today we have a special guest with us. Joe, do you want to introduce yourself? You're not really a special guest. Like we see you all the time, but <laughs> it's everybody else you are. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's me, Joe. You might recognize me from the uh, classes. Uh, I'm also the one responding to your emails and such. Um, the office administrator here at CLCI. I'm just excited to join the group. Uh, this is a very important one about your, uh, about presenting yourself to the world. So I thought it'd be nice to join and be part of that today. And Jerome, I'm going to have you take over for a few minutes really quick, if you don't mind. I do not. Let me just clear my throat first. And um, hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Tuesday CLCI Live here at 4 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Um, Joe teased a little bit on the topic, uh, and I'm going to try and fill you guys in a bit more as far as to what we're going to be speaking about today. And uh, we are speaking about something that we know can be difficult to actually embark on. It's uh, sales is kind of what we're going for, more specifically going about how to sell without selling. So we're going to give you a unique approach to it um, on your clarity calls and such. Um, and we're going to try and help you guys kind of you know maneuver through this space and hopefully potentially get you guys to be able to close a bit, a bit better. And uh, we'll be doing some role playing of scenarios. So that's exciting. Um, I think we're all going to try and give our best salesman um, pitch. So uh, stay tuned for that. And um, I will go ahead and let Lisa introduce herself too for a quick second right before we actually go ahead and get started on this all. Hi, I'm Lisa, Certified Life Coach Institute. I'm running the show um, with everyone here. We're all contributing to how phenomenal our classes are and have been growing exponentially. We're excited today to talk about something that oftentimes students are nervous uh, about collecting money for their services. And part of that has, has been alluded by Jerome and Joe and, and Brooke is that part of that is speaking about our new favorite product and that's our coaching, um, I'm almost gonna say menu, but that's not, the, our coaching services. There's the word I'm looking for. So we're gonna get into that discussion. Um, and Brooke, we're not hearing you, love. Yeah, hi there, oh. sorry about that. Um, uh, sorry, I was just, I just had somebody message and say that they couldn't see the live or, or it's for some, I don't know what's going on. Um, but oh, we have people here. Hi, Jerry, and hi, Trisha. When reminder, people who comment today could very well be winning tickets to Coach Talks this weekend. So, Trisha and Jerry, you are both on the list of um, of people who could potentially win. And Jared, hello, welcome, guys, welcome. <laughs> um, uh, it's good to see everybody. Okay, good. And then we got uh, Tina Marie couldn't get in. She's in now. So um, <laughs> hi, everybody and welcome. So today, yes, we are going to talk about um, how to sell without selling, how to, um, uh, we're going to actually talk a little bit about discovery calls and things like that, too. Um, anybody want to take a shot at what is a discovery call? Hi, Gretchen. It's good to see you. You guys are all entered to win. We'll be giving them away shortly. <laughs> if, it, if there are, I mean, if we, if we stay under a certain number, everybody could win. So that's pretty exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay. Who, you, you guys want to tackle, what is a discovery call or, or a clarity call or a first time call, a introductory call? <laughs> Hi, Bonnie. <laughs> I would say it's obviously that moment where you, you, put up your, your bootstraps and say, okay, I got my information out there in the world. I got my website up. I got my social media going and you put your phone number on there and you're sitting there holding one of these and saying, make some noise. And that noise happens to come through. And that's where you, that's where the walking off that you know moment happens. That's Tina, Tina Marie said it's seeing if y'all are a good fit, which is kind of, it is a little bit of that too. It's seeing if the coach uh -huh. and the client 
are going to work well together as well. That happens a bit in that call as well. Um, I think one thing to point out with the discovery call, kind of in tangent with, with that is to, yeah, it's a, an opportunity to make sure that it's a good fit. So it's not necessarily always a pitch, um, which kind of sounds scary. It's a weird word. I don't even know if I really should say it in that space, but um, you want to make sure it works for both of you guys. It's not just a, again, necessarily a pitch where you, you're trying to give them services and you just are shooting um, your shot to hopefully close. Um, you want to have that be as much beneficial for you as figuring out if you guys are going to work together well um, as it is for your client. So I kind of have my website. It's always spoken for itself because it says what I do. So that. Uh, generates interest um, as a couples coach. They already know what they're uh, coming into. Most of the time, I didn't have to do a huge amount of interaction on the phone, just a few minutes, because really where I wanted to spend the time was it, I was the in-person coach. <laughs> so it was to meet with them in person. And I never did any sales in the beginning of our interaction. It's um, the normal coach opening who I am, what I do, what's expectation from the uh, experience. For me, if you will, the sales port or part <laughs> would always come down um, towards the end of our session. That's when I've, I've already gotten feedback, body language feedback, knowing that they're into what we're discussing. Um, and so closing, if you will, closing the deal is pretty simple. Um, one of the things, if you think about when you're looking for a car, what's the first thing the car salesman has you do? Kind of take ownership of the vehicle, go out, experience it, drive it. So that's a similar concept. So I, I, I understand that what you're saying essentially, and that's, I think is, is you, you would have the first session with them, how, but they pay you for the first session, right? Mm -hmm. So how did they know to pay you? Um, that's never been a question. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. But that's what I mean. That's yeah. Just, so that's never been a question. I have prices. I'm, I'm a show and tell. I'm yeah. out show and tell. I don't want anybody guessing. I'm not trying to manipulate them when they call and let me prove to you that I'm, I'm the bomb and let me try and turn you in that moment. Um, which I, for me, that's what that looks like. That's not a wrong direction to go. For me, I wanna share with you as much as I can. So you're um, armed with knowledge and that price point is in your face because you're understanding that before you even come in. And I think what you're doing is bringing up a lot of points uh, that that I think are are really relevant. And and it's what you, what you do is you do it naturally without even thinking about it. Um, and that's selling yourself without selling. And that from you offer something of value to them, that which is you arm them with tools, you arm them with information that is valuable. That in itself is selling without selling because you're putting all your info out there so that they're they have it and it's straightforward. That's the beauty of um, being. Uh, being clear with your pricing, having a, a, a sticker price that, that everybody can see, because there is two, there are different schools of thought there. The, the win with being that is everybody knows you're consistent. So everybody knows they're getting the same price. So nobody feels like they're gonna be, you know, swindled or, and then also they get it, they can see it and then they can go, okay, there's the sticker shock moment process it and then call when they're ready to pay that and they know, okay, it's going to be this much minimum and they can prepare for that. If that sticker price isn't listed, they, they, they don't get to prepare. So there is a definite benefit there to listing your price. And going to the opposite of what I was saying, the benefit of not listing your price, you know, has potentially has them call you and you can turn that question into that you are what's that amaze balls you're amazing and well, that you are <laughs> worth whatever that price is it also so, again the there's no wrong way with that just be secure in who you are and how you're going to attack I think a big part of it is is also the the kind of coaching you're doing because there's different levels like different amounts of expectation that is going to come from your client so if you are a corporate coach you might be 
have a sliding scale because you might be value price, which means what, which is where you talk through and there's going to be some return on investment. And at that point, you're going to go, okay, well, if your return on investment, th this much percent of that will go to me or, you know, X amount, if this is worth you to you, hundred thousand dollars my fee is you know um and that that's there's a sliding scale that happens and that that's more common in in an environment where you can return prove your return on investment um pretty much more i mean much more common um however the biggest thing is is i think the first step in all of it in talking to anybody about what you do is selling yourself first which is is believing in your product, believing in what you are selling, and really you have to buy it first, right? right? Otherwise, oh, nobody right. else is going to buy it from you. <laughs> um, so it, that's about confidence uh, and and being believing in in what you offer people. Um, and uh, so, what what one of the things I, I I was going to do. So Lisa, if I call you on the phone, <laughs> I'm going to ring <laughs> and I'm, <laughs> I'm, I want to hire a couples coach. Um, so that's, I mean, hi, I'd like to hire you. What's the first thing you say? Well, it's, it really depends on that call in the sense of, do they have any questions about who I am and what I do? <clears throat> or are they just trying to get a call to get a sense of you know, voice connection. So let's play, so let's play. I'm, I'm told, let's play through it. Like, <laughs> I can't yeah. want to pretend. I mean, we do this all day. <laughs> um, um, so I, I will pretend that I need a, a, a relationship coach. So um, I'm going to call, ringing, and, ringing. <laughs> hello, sort of, or not certified life coach. What is my I know. couples coach, bro? <laughs> Hi there. Uh, hi, I was calling because I'm I'm curious about life. Uh, well, couples coaching. Um, I'm having some trouble in my relationship, and um, I just wanted to know more information. What information can I share with you? Um, uh, well, what can I expect? So the sessions um, typically run about ninety minutes. Some run sixty minutes. Uh, it's going to depend on who you are and what you share in the session and how, um, where we, we flow through the session and how that's going to play out. We're going to cover um, what's brought you in, right? Okay. You're, share with me some things uh, from your uh, perspective, as, as will your mate. We'll have probably some ground rules when each of you are speaking. It just, again, depends on the couple and who you are in the process on where we go with the information. Maybe we'll come up with tools on that first session. Maybe it will be more of uh, disclosures. Well, how many sessions? I mean, how long until the relationship's fixed? <laughs> You're fully in charge of that answer. <laughs> the idea is most couples will commit to about three months and then see where they are in that moment to see where they, um, you know, we're going week to week as we're meeting. Uh, and then as the tools and techniques uh, are applied by you at home, oftentimes that can change. How much, uh, how much does one session cost? Like how much is it going to cost me? Yeah. So your, your uh, first session is $150 for the 90 minutes. Uh, it's normally $150 for 60 minutes. Okay. And do you offer packages or anything like that? So I do. Well, once you come in and once we discover who you are, what your expectations are, where you want to go with yourself as a couple, we'll have that conversation when you come in. Do you accept insurance? There are no insurance <laughs> accepting for coaching. Um, okay, thank thank you. I'll call you back. <laughs> yeah. Here's what's funny. Uh, one of the things I learned about, which thank you, that was awesome. <laughs> uh, when when I in my, the moment somebody calls you and they say, um, I've been looking around at a lot of different people. Typically, they're probably not going to buy. They're not going to close. They're still in a looking mentality. So you, and that's the thing. You can't expect every call to end in, in, in that moment with, I'm going to, I'm going to get your services, you know, you can ask them if they're saying, yeah, I'm looking around, tell me what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. 
that's potentially a, a direction. And that's that that's a huge point when it comes to being on and uh, hi Stacy Bird. Um uh so uh when it comes to this and and you want to listen first. So you want to listen to whoever is calling and what their needs are. Really a lot of what you have learned in class goes dovetails beautifully with with what you should be doing on the phone. I mean, really, you should be just being there as a listening ear and and empathizing and helping them. But you don't want to spend you're you're not giving away a session. So you're yeah. not spending an entire session. And, and honestly, most of the conversations I've had <clears throat> when I do have clients um, first time calling, I'm usually on the phone five minutes max. We're setting that appointment and they're coming in. Um, okay, but I know I have gotten roped in a time or two where, you know, it's just like they put that foot for that, like they're in some kind of mode and they put that and then it's like, oh, I just want to help. <laughs> um, it's hard not to. It's, it's really, it is. It's tough not to. It is. I've, I've, I've done, I mean, for the most part, I can typically like steer it away from there. Um, but uh, it definitely is, is um uh, there, I, there have been, I've had impromptu coaching Without sessions. <laughs> I'm like, I should not be doing this right now. <laughs> yeah. um, I doubt that happens. But yeah. if you're doing that, just be, just be okay with that. That's what, and that's the thing is that's the, you putting out that energy, that hot, that giving energy, and it will return to you. It will return to you. Um, uh, so listening, empathize with them when they call too. So if they've got, um, anything going on and then you want to listen for what their need is or a way to connect with them typically as well that's always helpful just something to to make that connection most of the time though people who are calling you guys as coaches they'll already have an idea of who you are um for the most part maybe not in lisa's case because you ran google ads so you got um correct so you got yeah, just, google yeah. ads and then word of mouth of course the the idea a lot of them also depending on your niche and how you're interacting um, a lot of them even texted. So that sometimes made it more easily a slower version of that initial. I will say, so for me, and when I'm doing consulting, I, 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 it might start, but I always hold a 15 or 20 minute phone call. It's usually a Zoom call. And that's just so I can take a moment to get to know what their needs are. And then I, cause, but, but I usually quote when I'm doing my quoting for, um, so it, it, for me, it's a lot easier for me to get, figure out what their needs are, see if I can solve them. And then, then I'm able to give a more clear idea of what, what the cost will be. I guess I'm more of a sliding scale person, but that's because my, I, my, it's not just one thing I do. So, um, well, you adjust the product to meet the needs. And yes, exactly. The value that the client can. Uh, present mm -hmm. and that brings me to a good point too you never want to devalue your product or, or appear desperate um in that way because that's what that's the result of devaluing so if you have somebody and you're saying okay i am charging 125 or 150 an hour um and if they can't pay it there's i guess there is a there is a fine dance with doing that right um hi ribian by the way and jared Hello, and Tina, me, Tina Marie asked a question too. So hold on. What about if you go uh, give a lower rate for the first session because some people are feeling are feeling based uh, people and they want to feel you out? I think that that's, I mean, that's you do the 90 minutes for 150. So it's the same price, but she gives extra time because she knows the first session will be longer. Um, I think that that it. I think that there is good and bad there. There is. Um, it's good to warm them up and let them feel you out. And if you feel that confident and you're sold on yourself, and then then yeah, you can do that. Um, but I also think that there's benefits just having a flat rate across the board and just just letting people know this is what I charge and not being kind of don't move on it. You know. <laughs> um, Lisa, do uh, yeah. The thing that you could do is if you are working with a culture that has um, less money than what you as a business need to earn um, per hour, if we're going to do hourly uh, costs, 
is that you hold groups. You reduce the fee for what the client pays by holding more than one person um, based on what they could pay. So that's where you still get what you have to get and where they are getting a reduced cost. Um, Rivian asks, is it important to have a website? And I'm gonna say yes and no. Yeah. But yes, it is, because at the end of the day, it's where everybody ends up going at some point just to sort of see what you're about, you know? I think you can get away with it for a while if you're really good on your, and on, you know, good at sell. You gotta sales. have something else. But you gotta have, you, you've gotta have a warm market, essentially. Yeah. You've, gotta you've, be got, you've gotta have Facebook or you've gotta have a Twitter, or something where you're on social media where you, they can check you out. But that's the, it's sort of where they vet you having that, that website. Cause here's the thing. If you just have a, if you're just listed on Google, I go to Google the moment I see them, I'm clicking on for a website, right? I'm looking for a website. That's just what it, you just have to have that there. I think now I think you can have a simple, I think your website should be simple. I don't think it needs to be, you know, uh, 15 pages and full of content. I think basic website, honestly, I, I, you could have three blog posts on the whole thing and just build those out and keep revamping them until they're, they're really good. Um, and then that you've got some quality content on there too. Think, think um, about what your behavior is yourself. Do you look at people's websites? If you're the first person that says, yes, I definitely look at their websites. Well, that's more than likely the clientele that you will attract or people that are gonna do that because of who you are and if you will, law of attraction and how we put things out there, so. It's just, it's um, it's very important. I think that's that's how you brand yourself, right? And I guess you can, you can do it through Facebook. There are a lot of ways to do that. I think though, nowadays you, you can, we can, you can get a website, something up there pretty quickly. So it, you might as well, right? I think just about everywhere offers making a website nowadays. And all you need is a button and a, some information and you're set. <laughs> um, Phone numbers and way of contact. A way of contacting you, yes. Just so people know how to get a hold of you. Um, uh, again, you're not gonna be doing a lot of sales on social. There's not a lot of selling on social that happens. Social is kind of where you're giving it out to people and you're you're, and then you're, you want to bring them from social to you from there. So um, also one of the things talking about this, um, what you, you mentioned texting, getting them on the phone. What's your best thoughts on, on getting that information to people, like getting that out there to people, getting, getting people to know, I'm just curious, uh, to call you, to, to pick up the phone and dial or to text. How did... What were you, what was the most successful ways you did that, Lisa? I, I think I'm not really following the question. Oh, um, yeah. Well, I know you've used different ways of finding yeah. clients. For the so most part, Google. I mean, I did have a Facebook and did some advertising on that. Um, I was never a big Twitter person, so I didn't do Twitter. But I, I you know, I have to think about the walk that my clients will do when they're looking for a relationship help, where are they gonna go? And so for me, it became about really getting on that um, Google. Google uh, ads, yeah. Ads. Well, the great um, thing about- There's also networking. So there's different networkings. Mm -hmm. I had some lawyers that I um, initially worked with and talked with. Um, you know, I, I was members of PTA and told them. So I, I spoke about whatever I, wherever I was, I spoke about what I did and somebody always referred. I mean, I got referrals from across the pond mm -hmm. <laughs> as well. We had um, some referrals from England or we, I had referrals from England and Scotland and um, just different areas, um, Brazil. Uh, so, okay, we have word of mouth from Stacey Bird. Jared 
says that you need a website in this day and age. And then Elaine says her first instinct is to Google people that I plan on doing business with. Exactly. And so that's what the thing is. I think now it's about 92% of the market share is owned or of the searchable market share is owned by Google. They, everybody Googles. That's just yeah. what they do. And what happens when we Google, that's why we, we've done one of these on how to set up your Google My Business. We, that's important. And then once they're there, the next step is going to be the website. Yeah. And then the next step after that is to, to start to fill out, you know, write, create some valuable content, a few things, we call them lead hooks that, that get people something to read on your site, because that's good for SEO. That's good for a number of, of reasons. Um, uh, women, uh, WAM and business cards after a good conversation, lol. Um, Oh, <laughs> she drives Lyft. I love that. Driving Lyft. That's actually great. <laughs> but you know what that is ultimately though? It's about being willing to talk about, that's the first point, selling yourself first and being excited about what you do and sharing it with people and not being afraid to just put it out there, you know, and say, yeah, this is what I do. <laughs> um, Sometimes uh, the story I share is um, I was traveling it when I was teaching back in the day. And then I was sitting at a breakfast restaurant um, on an embankment. And all of a sudden, two people came and sat next to me. And we were chit chatting. We we're just having a great conversation. And I thought, oh, I'm going to just pull my cards out and hand them my cards. Um, and it was two guys. But it, it wasn't weird. It was just a normal conversation. And we were just chit chatting about different things and where they were going. And they were going to a Whistler to go skiing and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I've always wanted to snowboard Whistler. I have yet to do it. I will one day. <laughs> I pulled my cards out and all of a sudden I see this ginormous bling on his finger and I just go, oh, then I start to overthink it. And that always gets you in trouble. As soon as you overthink the, the potential of passing my business card oh, to yeah. these people, I, I overthought it. I go, oh my gosh, what's that ginormous? Uh, ring you have on and it was the Stanley Cup ring and so I'm looking on my phone Stanley Cup ring because I didn't know <laughs> <laughs> nonetheless I I overthought it and I never gave him my card so when I was oh. finished eating I stood up I walked to the trash can and I threw two business cards in the trash can I go never do that again if you're going to give them your cards give them your cards and be done with it and still and, have the conversation. I mean, what's the worst that's going to happen? Really? Like what? They would have thrown it away. That's I mean, the worst thing that would happen. The worst is you, somebody says no, and you're right back where you started, but no yeah. big deal. Right. But the, exactly. the best case scenario, you've given your card to somebody who, if they don't use it, they can give it to somebody else that your information is there. Um, it's, that's so huge. I don't know why there's something since, okay. At, at, I think it was, I was probably about eight or nine years old, I would knocked on every neighbor's door. We just moved to a new neighborhood and I knocked on every door and I went, hi, my name is Brooke. Do you have any kids your age, kids my age that live here? Every single door. And I knew what I like. I was selling myself. I mean, I, I kicked butt at every like wrapping paper sale. Like I, cause I always wanted to win the prizes. I wanted to go to Disneyland. I wanted, so I would sell, like, I just have I've been kind of shameless in that way my whole life. Um, it's we're being reward motivated. That's really what it is. It's like, I want the reward. So I'll work my butt off for it. Um, so I, that, that, I guess that fear in that regard of, of putting that out there and selling it, especially if I'm selling for other people that I can do really, really well. Um, yeah. But there is always, of course, that moment of hesitation and but again I think theater helped with that as well that's what you said taking an improv class but just putting yourself out there that's huge and don't be selling yourself believing in your product talking to people about it being excited about it mm -hmm. um if you're excited about it they're going to get excited about it if you are thrilled they're going to be thrilled um the, Lisa and I answer phones for CLCI um and I the number of times that people call and the fact that I am I'm excited about what we do is means a lot to them. It does. Cause it, it, you know, happy, happy staff, good product typically. Yeah. <laughs> um, when I shop for a dentist, I look for a dentist with a uh, happy staff. <laughs> um, sometimes people take business cards and later on down the road, they call you. Absolutely. Um, 
when I do shows, so I, I used to do a lot of trade show things and I, you get a bunch of cards from that. And immediately afterwards, I, this is the follow through though. When you receive a card, when you, you should always e text, email, do whatever, make a contact with those people again, if they've given you their information, maintaining those contacts it, once you've gotten them is so impair it's so good it's such a good thing to do it's just good habits to have um well i want to talk to you let's talk about getting referrals like and word of mouth that's that's one thing that i think coaches over overlook sometimes is think about what you already have working for you in your space in your realm um and and taking advantage of that um where, where do you have a group of people that trust you already? And that's a good place to start selling your services, quite honestly, because you've, you, they, they trust you. And, and that's a big part of sales. Agree with you. Uh, when you talk from a place of passion, authenticity, it's contagious and can be intriguing to potential clients. Absolutely true. Yes. Yes, Jared. Um, uh, so like Lisa mentioned, PTA, right? You, what a great place to sell a relationship coaching. <laughs> um, and that's, I mean, that's ideal, isn't it? Um, and that's, I, I wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't know Lisa's brother. It was all, you know, it was, and that's all referral and word of mouth. Um, so don't shy away from that. Uh, it's no less of a success if you already know that person or if you they're, they're a friend of a friend or that's still a success and still a win and still a sale. It's not any less of a sale in that way. So, sometimes we have acquaintances that are more um, vocal with how they interact with people. So give them a coaching session, let them experience a coaching session and encourage them to go off and share her, her or his experience. Um, that's gonna be the, a wonderful word of mouth uh, connection too. And that I want to, when you are excited, when you're in, there's even this, the, the thought that if you're giving something of value or demonstrating what you do, and in that it is valuable, instead of just telling people I do X, Y, and Z, there are so many avenues now where you can show people. And so doing something like we're doing now a live or, or what have you, but you're with somebody and you're, you're giving yourself a platform for you to share when you're, when you feel the most confident, right? That's the foot you want to put forward. So if you know, I'm really good at, at this, I feel really good doing this. I know this will share. I feel very confident. You can take that and put it out to the world, right? In a, in a form of social media. And if it's a little group coaching session or it's a, and you share that and you share that in an, in the effort to create sort of trust and to let people know what you do and let them actually see it. And that there's a tremendous amount of value in doing that. And, and um, it's kind of like selling without selling. You're, you're just demonstrating what, what you're capable of and, and, mm -hmm. and having the confidence to do that. Um, that actually really is really a good thing and a good way to sort of put your, your branding or, or what you do out there in some regard. I think it's kind of a lot more common these days than it once was. I know that the moment somebody says to me, um, hi, you're a coach. <laughs> uh, I can, I can make you six figures. Uh, I'm like, oh my God, I'm running out the Run door. Run for the hills. <laughs> Run for the hills. That's the other thing. Those folks who do that don't even look at your profile to see what you do. They don't know anything. It's like such a canned response. And it's so frustrating. It's like, if you're going to sell to me, and just cold call sell to me, at least take a moment to know who I am. Like, you know, um, that, that is not to say that aren't some, some are really good, but they're, oh, no. they're <laughs> not in abundance. So research, just like you did with us, when you came to the school as a student, I'm going to say the majority of you, if not 90%, 100% of you research the heck out of us, you research, so do that. Research any business that is trying to solicit um, your, <laughs> just from you, your money. That's the same concept that you are trying to sell to others, but you are not cold calling. You're not mm -hmm. soliciting um, a return because you're feeling desperate. If you're desperate, then that's 
people pick up on the approach. desperation that's and the pitchy that sales like it's like our skin crawl i mean there's so much of it that's the thing with the internet is it's inundated with that sales that pitch that sales that you're getting it all the time i'm getting text messages now all the time it drives me crazy yeah. um and we're just so, going to have a conversation is this the right fit for you is this yeah. And that's the thing is if you take the time to be authentic with somebody and just really know them, like take the moment and go, okay, let's chat this. Let's talk for a few minutes and get on their level and, and just be real and be willing to, here's the thing, be willing to, to let them walk away, be willing to say, no, it's not a good fit. You don't want to go into any call or sales like, oh man, I need this so bad if I don't, you know, because that will come forward and come through you want to go into it like you're interviewing them back, you know, like there's a chance you don't want their business. Um, it's much like uh, when you do an interview for, for um, a job, the, one of the best ways you can go to interview with a job is to interview them back, um, to have the confidence to do that. That's one of, it's a great interviewing technique. Um, and I think it's a similar kind of thing. You want to go into this sales calls and things like that. If it's not sales, discovery calls, clarity calls um, with, with, the intention of, of figuring out if you're a good fit on both sides, on both sides. And that's where that referral comes in great. Cause if let's say you're not have somebody that you can refer them to, and that will refer back to you and start to develop a network. That's why your coaches are your friends. You guys can refer to each other all day from different niches um, and, and be really kind of helpful for one another. Um, and, and sometimes they will call and they'll be interested, but they're not ready yet. So sometimes that just takes time for them to percolate in that direction of uh, wanting your services, signing up for your services, um, but have, have everything ready. That website to me is gonna be really important because it'll be something that they can flag, not flag. Um, what's the word I'm looking for where they put it as a favorite? Oh, bookmark. Bookmark. <clears throat> so that they can come back to it. And not only that, I think too, a big point is that know your prices beforehand, know what you want, know what your, your prices are, know what you're going to go into this and ask for and own it and um, be prepared with that because being, having being prepared will make it a lot easier for you to ask for it. And uh, I think people, here's the thing that we, people expect to pay you. They expect for it to cost money. Nobody's expecting to get coaching for free. Um, so don't be afraid to ask one question. How have you ever been in the situation where you had a non-paying client and you needed to switch them to a paying client? Um, well, <clears throat> one of the ways that we attracted uh, people is if they booked and paid for their first session, they got their second session free, but then they would have to pay. So it was not really. So I'm, I'm working this a little bit and to answer what you're saying, but not I was, really. I was just going to say, I was just going to see if, uh, you know, what, what, if any, if you, there was any pointers or tips with, yeah. with having that conversation with somebody. And I, I would say, I mean, I've, I've had to have it in the sense of, um, okay, I'm charging more. I'm, you know, it is a similar situation and it's just a matter of, of once again, owning it and saying, Hey, uh, I have to start charging now. This is just the nature of, you know, this is my business and um, I love the work we've been doing. And if you'd like, and then you can, this is a situation where you can maybe work with somebody a little bit um, and you can say, okay, so I know it's been free and maybe, you, so if you want, we can sort of step you up to the, to the rate or something along those lines. Um, yeah. What some people will do is give it a, um, a deadline, meaning like for three sessions, we can do that. Um, it, but I, at the third session, I'll be speaking with you about what it's going to be like uh, for the paid session. I will say the greatest thing too, is to give them warning ahead of time. So like give them a few, don't just like drop the ball, boom. Uh, and just, but say, okay, so starting the first of next month, I'm going to start charging and it's just across the board. It's a blanketed thing. And that way they have a little bit of time to prepare themselves for that. And, and they, they know it's coming and it's not some big like secret. It's very transparent. And that's the best, one of the best thing you can do is always be transparent in your sales. Always, always be consistent and be transparent. Um, because that, I mean, that builds trust. And ultimately this is all about building trust. People don't spend money unless they trust you. 
Um, we are we are going to be giving away some tickets here shortly to all of you guys who are amazing and super, super involved today. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Um, Jared said, I love being able to talk with people even briefly about themselves. And for me to talk about my passion in coaching, it's a great exchange of information and energy. I absolutely agree. Yeah, absolutely. And then, uh, Stacey Bird said, if you're comfortable <clears throat> with yourself, people will be comfortable uh, with you being their, their coach. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You have to, confidence sells more than anything else, quite honestly, you can, you, I know that's what, what a snake oil salesman, that's what, there are people out there who have no credentials, no, but they're confident and they're putting it out there and people will buy. Why? Because they believe that was rule number one in all this, believe in what they're selling. They've sold themselves first. Um, I should hope, unless they're really good at faking it. <laughs> um, hi, that's Eric. Kind of, go ahead. Oh, Eric Dorsho. I was just saying hi. He said hello. He just completed level two. Um, oh. Yeah, I remember he worked, but he was on he was on Sunday's show with us. He was on LinkedIn. Do you have any advice for people on LinkedIn, Lisa? LinkedIn is an amazing platform. There's different versions of it. Uh, is oftentimes a, a business platform that it does potentially work for executive coaching, especially well, yeah. but it can also be uh, personal coaching. You just have to be present. It's kind of a similar concept as Facebook. Your relevance is what you uh, blogged or posted. Um, you, is that where your target market is? That's the evaluation you have to find out. What was his? Your his was lawyers, so I, he's he's yeah. in the right spot. Yeah, he's yeah, in a good he's spot. Totally in the right spot. Yeah, uh, Zena Zena <laughs> says pricing has been hard for her. Um, tell us if you want, put a comment in there. Tell us what's been hard about it. Maybe we can help. And I'm um, gonna flop just, around with that idea. Is think about in your area, depending on your city, depending on your location, what are the labor rates in your area? the stylists, the plumbers, the mechanics, the, what are the labor rates? What is now that you've investigated that cost? What is your specialty? What does your specialty garner for um, an income? And then what do you have to earn? That's what I was going to take it one step further. So, and actually this, this is a great lead up I, in the next, I don't know if it'll be the next one, but coming up in the next couple of weeks, um, we're going to be doing a, an episode on pricing and we're, um, I've been working on a pricing calculator that will help with all of that. Um, so that'll be something that we will share with you guys here shortly in the next couple of weeks, which um, I, I wanted, I was, I, I wanted it to be today, but it just didn't work out today <laughs> that way today. So um, uh Tina says she just got her first conversion. Congrats, Tina. That's amazing. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> and then Gretchen says, I have a coach that has worked with me for a few years on and off. I've learned a lot about interactions um, with how she does sessions, billing packages, pricing in increases, et cetera. Um, and, and that packages are, again, we'll go over pricing again uh, soon here in the next couple of weeks. That's just really also knowing what you, you want to put out there, knowing that and, and knowing what you need too. Um, and as always, when doing this, remember, you want to connect with people on an emotional level. You do. That's so imperative. Um, that That is making that emotional connection is what will make a memory and not just, you know. Authentically. You stick with yeah, them. you're not going to pretend. You all are carrying people. So that you're just going to be carrying as you're interacting with them in that same fashion. You're going to open up the dialogue. You're going to share with them and answer their questions. You may think of questions. You're going to use the coaching skills that we've been um, on you guys about making sure you're going to open the session, finding out what their needs are and where they want to go with it. And that's going to bring them in. You being interested in them and honorably authentic with them, that's it. That's a done deal. So, okay, we we have to give tickets away okay. uh, here. We're gonna so we're gonna be giving tickets away to uh, Coach Talks, which is this is exciting. So Coach Talks is coming up this weekend. Um, uh, Lisa and I will be talking on Friday. It got a little switched around. Um, oh. So 
it looks like we're talking on Friday now. That's uh, right. I said no. <laughs> Dan okay. will be talking on Sunday, um, which is exciting. Uh, I will. I'll also be there on Sunday. I I know that I'm emceeing. I'm not sure when or where, but <laughs> um, I know that I'll be present and accounted for. But t Coach Talks is coming up. Um, uh, why why am I? Jack Canfield is talking on on Friday, which is exciting. Um, so. Uh, join us. Uh, we're going to give tickets away. I'm going to count. Take a moment. Jerome, you've been quiet. I think you need to talk for a bit while I count people. <laughs> hey, I kind of, if, if maybe Lisa can help me out with this, I yeah. just kind of, um, I had a question really quickly as far as uh, just to kind of wrap up our conversation about um, discovery calls. Can you bullet point really quickly the things that you should have ready um, upon receiving a call? Just really um, that so, so for me, I have awareness of who I am, what I'm doing, right? That's obvious. Uh, price point. Uh, they don't always ask me that because again, it's clearly on my website and everybody goes to the website. So just have that understanding. I have a pen and paper ready hmm. um, to jot anything down that I might I want to use for a potential session because I am listening to what they're saying. I want to be able to reflect back <clears throat> to the whole person and their emotions and their experience. So I, I will take notes um, to be uh, empathetic with the process. Um, I don't, for me, I'm not going to stay on the conversation very long. That's not where I do uh, my initial session or uh, I will give that first half hour, if you will, or the last half hour, however you want to interpret that. And when I was in person, I'm not uh, the coaching sessions I've been doing on zoom. I've already established, I haven't established a uh, list. I haven't uh, invited new um, clients at the moment. So again, just be yourself. Um, represent who you are, have it be congruent to what you have put out there in the social medias or your website, have it reflect who you are in the same way when they call, it's going to come across um, to be authentically you. I don't, did that answer your question? I, that absolutely did. Did you say, you, did you say pricing? Have your pricing ready? Have your hours yeah. ready? Know when your hours are, when you're yeah, going to have your appointment book. book. Oh, yeah, there you yeah. go. I forgot yeah, about so the appointment that, book. Yeah. You want to know when you're going to, they'll be able to schedule you and um, how, yeah. how often and all that. Um, know how long your sessions are going to be. Yeah. Um, just that those kind of base and also know how you can accept payment. Oh yeah. That's another good one. There's all kinds of different ones that are out there. People go, which one's the best one? One week, one's better than the other. So just do your research. I've kind of been on all of them. I'm on Venmo, I have PayPal, Intuit, Square. I just, I got the litany of lists. And They're that's all another, fine. another area that being consistent is good too, is, is in all of those little details. Is not just in the pricing, but also in the knowing when you're gonna when your office hours are so that people know they can always reach you at this time or they can always you know knowing how you're going to communicate knowing if if it's something because there are some coaches that that talk to their clients through whatsapp um and or they talk to their clients through another messaging system there are other coaches that have unlimited emails and that's part of the 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 their value the way they add value to what they're doing is they say okay you can con keep being in contact with me unlimited via email however i'm going to ask that you you know we only meet phone calls are this long or what so just really define those little details for yourself i will say though so many of those things were not defined when i started out my was and so but i definitely learned along the way um and and then knowing uh having your contract fleshed out uh as well for that prior to so you can get that sent out and they can read it over that's a great thing to have because in there you'll have your refund policy you'll have your late policy you'll have all of that those nitty gritty details can go into that contract, including how they can pay you. Um, mm -hmm. So having that set is good. Elaine asked, do you tape your sessions? Nope, I, I know quite a few coaches that do record and that's why keeping that, having that in the um, coach contract is important. Um, mine are recorded 
they tend to be. Uh, however, I don't ever do anything with them. So, <laughs> except they take up space on my Zoom cloud <laughs> um, or on my desk, my, my computer. Um, however, there are examples like I had a I, I had a coach share a session with me today that um, he was coached in, but it was a very powerful session and he wanted to share the information, just wanted to sort of go check this out. So that's sometimes very, it's a good thing and it's not, doesn't necessarily mean you have to send it to ICF. I know a lot of other coaches have tape of, so they can go back and watch and figure out how they can get better or what they could have sort of critiqued their own work. Um, and that's, uh, there's, I've read, I don't know, I hate watching myself, so it's hard for me to go back and do that, it really is. I can see the value in it though, I really can. And I know that when you do mentor coaching, that's exactly what you're doing. So you're, you're, you are having to go back through those. Mm -hmm. So, and, and you're taping all those sessions and mentor coaching as well, right? So I'm gonna call it right now, uh, everybody who commented and interacted during this, this here, conversation that we've had, you guys will all win a ticket to um, uh, Coach Talks this weekend. From Now, anybody after this point, I'm sorry, too late, too late. My apologies, <laughs> but uh, anybody who has commented from this, it ends with Elaine's question, do you tape your sessions? So we will get you, I will get you, uh, or one of us will get you, uh, the, basically what will happen is we'll, we'll send you a link in your message, uh, mess in messenger words are hard, guys, um, <laughs> and uh, and the, it'll have all the information you need from there. Congratulations! And uh, Congratulations. it's this weekend, and it's pretty awesome. By the way, those tickets are good for all seven months of Coach Talks. So it's not just for this weekend. You get to go to all seven months of Coach Talks every month. Congratulations! So, Woohoo! Um, Congratulations! I'll listen. I'll, I'll I'll give the names of everybody who's won. Um, uh, Jerry, Trisha, Jared, Gretchen, Bonnie, Tina, and Rivian, Stacy, Elaine. I think that's almost everybody. Oh, uh, also Eric as well, and Zena. I think that's everyone. So congratulations, guys. Congratulations. Thank you so much for interacting. Thank you for thank being you. here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Coach Talks is virtual, Tina. It's online, so it's all going to be done through Facebook. Basically, the way it's working is they're opening up a Facebook group that if you have a ticket, you get admitted into the Facebook group. And um, uh, then because all of the workshops and everything will be posted to the Facebook, Facebook group throughout the weekend. So you guys will all get to, uh, basically the uh, free admittance to all of the coach talks for the next seven months. And there's gonna be, it's just gonna be a very coach centric um, uh, uh, weekend this weekend. So thank you guys, Trisha. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for being here. Thank you for everything. And for those of you out there who don't know and aren't our alumni, <laughs> um, uh, make sure and check out Certified Life Coach Institute. We train life coaches in three days. You guys want to say, say goodbye? <laughs> um, thank you so much for being here. We enjoy these. These are amazing. Check us out, Certified Life Coach Institute. We've got all kinds of uh, more tidbits even on our website that we were talking about websites earlier. Go ahead, Jerome. I just want to say thank you guys for joining us again. And don't forget, we'll be back here again next Tuesday at four. Um, thank you guys so much for the interaction today. And uh, congratulations to all you guys. Do I get a ticket? Yes, you get a ticket, Jerome. Right. Of course you get a ticket, Jerome. Of course you get a ticket. Um, also, uh, those of you guys watching, if you have any ideas, if there's anything we haven't kind of covered, any questions, any topics that you think would be great for our CLCI Live, put them in the comments and we will we read them and we will absolutely, we will we will do our best to help you. So please, please, please pop some, some uh, any topics that you guys have or want covered in here. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Make sure you comment, share, and like, and check out CLCI. Thank Bye, you, guys. Thank Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you so much, Stacey. Thank you so much, Ruby. And thank you, Tina. Thank you, Elaine. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> thank you, Jared. Thank you, Eric. Bye. <laughs>